Welcome back everyone. My name is Pedron and this is where we do machine learning codes and concepts. Let's get started. All right, this is our part two, module three, linear regression models, econometric approach. So hopefully you watched the lecture theory and now you're ready to do it in Python. So go to my GitHub account, machine learning USU, lectures and codes, and then module three, let's find the module three here, linear regression, and then you have to go ahead and click on this IPy notebook. And if you remember last time when we were doing the EDA uh, in module two, we worked on the wage data sets. We clean it out and save it as a pickle file. So we're going to work with that one. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one. And then you can go ahead and click on open in a new collab. So this is going to be your uh, basically code that you're going to work with. And again, to, in order to make sure that this is your own version, you go ahead and make a copy for yourself, right? So I'm going to say, you can go ahead and save it. And when you try to make changes and save, save it, save a copy and drive yourself. And then that's going to be the version, which is yours. And you can play around with it. So it's, it's, it will be some like copy of module three linear regression. So I'm going to go ahead and connect. So we don't need to connect to a GPU or anything fancy. This is simple linear regression, very small data set. We're going to connect to a simple CPU. Okay. And then make sure that you have to upload your pickle file here uh, to be able to get access to it through Google Colab. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that one. So let me actually open the folder. Uh, lectures and codes, module three. Yeah, this is the pickle file that we're going to upload. So it's going to give you a warning that do you trust this code, this uh, the, the file, and you say yes. And yeah, then let me go ahead and minimize this one. All right, so it is connected. We are ready to go over the Python file. So this one, um, as of today, you know, you guys all have access to things like ChatGPT, Cloud2, Google Bard, Microsoft Bing, and you name it. And I assume that the, the, the application part of the, the basically the courses, the classes that we're going to go over is going to be a lot easier you, with the help of ChatGPT. So I'm going to go through these lines of codes very quickly compared to what we used to do in the previous semesters. And the reason is that now, well, for example, if you use ChatGPT 3.5 model, it's going to help you a ton in terms of understanding every single line of these codes. So there's not much value added if I repeat those things. I'm going to show it to you how to do it, for example, on your own. And then uh, we're going to go th through what I have here for you very quickly. So this is my, this is the prompt that I already gave chat GPT. So this is GPT 3.5, the free version. You can try exact same prompt in the cloud to Microsoft Bing and you name it. So this is just for the sake of, uh, uh, it's clean output. I'm going to use chat GPT. So this is a prompt I use. And again, my goal is to show you how we can do these things very easily now uh, when it comes to coding part, and then you can communicate with your personal tutor to understand every single line of the code and more importantly, interpret every single line of the output. So let's, let's do a quick sample together and then we're gonna jump into the, to the code that I put together for you. Okay, so I say, I wanna use a stats model formula API to regress wage and education, age and IQ. So help me to code this in Python, give me a simple hypothetical example. So we're gonna use a stats model. And for those of you who are not familiar with stats model, stats model is a very popular, let me actually open it up, a Python package, which is specifically developed for the uh, econometric analysis, right? So because the output of stats model compared to the, for example, scikit-learn that we're familiar with in machine learning is a lot more detailed. So you can, because remember, this is a econometric approach. For econometric approach, we're using uh, basically, we're, we're trying to interpret things, right? And we need, we need to know the p-values, t-stats, standard deviation, and everything, and you name it, right? So that's why we're going to use a stats model. And stats model itself has, um, there, there are two ways you can basically run a regression model in stats model. One is simply stats model API. The other one is a stats model formula, right? Uh, the formula is basically, this is a, uh, this is the R style kind of formula. For example, if you want to regress Y on X1, X2, X3, you can say, you know, this is, imagine this is our data set. 
and we are regressing the lottery on literacy plus wealth plus region. So this is literally the R type of uh, style that we're going to do in Python. And it's very, very convenient, right? You can play around. It, it is perfect for feature engineering, right? So for example, you have 100 features and you want to play around with a few of them. You don't need to go ahead and construct the data frame and then uh, run the regression on the data frame. So we're going to do it on the, uh, on the fly, right? So for example, I can add, I don't know, wealth to the power of two. I can add log version of you know, some variables and things like that. I can add interaction very easily in this version. And imagine you have no idea how to do that, but you know the right package is a stats model, and then that's why you're going to use ChatGPT. Say, okay, go ahead and give it, uh, you know, show me how to do that. Obviously, you're going to import stats model API as SM, uh, formula API as SMF. So again, this is the one that we're going to use. This is if you want to do it in R style kind of things. And then we are going to use pandas down the road. So this is a hypothetical data set, wage, education, age, IQ. So some simple observation, I assume it's 10, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, 10 simple observations, and it's gonna tell you how we can fit the model. Model is equal to, from this formula API, we are gonna use the OLS engine and or estimator. And the formula is, this is the R style, right? Wage regressing on education, age, IQ. And obviously we're gonna run it on the data. And then if I do dot fit, it's gonna fit the model. And now if I call the attribute, uh, the, the method of summary out of it and then print it, the, the output is gonna be super nice. So this is how we're gonna quickly do it in Python. And as you can see, you can go ahead and copy the entire thing, paste it in your Google Colab and see, and take it from there, right? It's, it's going to go ahead and explain what's going on here, right? I leave it up to you to just give it a try and read it on your own. Your answers might be different. Well, it will be different because this is heuristic. Well, these are probabilistic models, right? The outcomes are going to change every single time. And then in the next prompt, I say, how can I add age squared? So for example, you want to incorporate some, some nonlinearity in your uh, in your regression, in your model, right? And this is what we covered in the theory lecture, right? So for example, you believe that the relationship between age and wage should be nonlinear. So I say, how can I add the age squared to the model? I also want to add the interaction between education and IQ. So you believe that for different levels of IQ, the effect of education on wage is different, right? So if that's the case, how can you do that? And again, look at that. I'm just playing, you know, I'm just talking to this model you know, in plain English. And uh, and for for the packages that are very well developed already, like, you know, stats models, scikit-learn, things like that, and there's tons of documentations out there in the programming language like Python, I would absolutely trust the output of ch the models like ChatGPT because they are perfectly designed to do something like that. And in worst case scenario, you can try to code and copy paste it and see if it's doing the thing you want to do. But I would say for packages like this, usually the first try is a correct answer. All right. So then here is how we can add the, for example, age square or interaction between education and IQ. As you can see, we're using this I function, I open close parenthesis, and then H to the power of two. So this is perfectly just like our language, you know, our programming language kind of style. And then for the interaction between education and IQ, we're going to do something like this. So we already know that how to do things in Python, so we don't need to go over this one. But you get the idea. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you how you should be able to do it on your own, right? And then it explains to you what is this, what is this the interaction term. And then if, you're, if you don't know how to interpret the interaction term, you can say, okay, help me understanding the interaction term, why we need to add it to the model and things like that, okay? And then I would say, I said, okay, give me a, a, a sample of the model summary, right? So it's gonna generate something like this. So this is, going, this is the output that you're gonna see if you use the stats model. And then this is a lot more informative compared to what we will see later in the course when you're using a stats model, when you're using scikit-learn package in the machine learning approach kind of linear regression, right, for linear regression. So this is a lot more details because we have access to all the coefficients. Remember that from the theory lecture, this is my beta hat one, beta hat two, beta hat three, and et cetera, right? And these are the standard errors. This is a t-stat, you know, the t-stat is gonna tell me if, or the p-values, we can read it either way, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it, it tell me, for example, if the effect of, let's say, education on wage is statistically significant. In this case, it is significant at 5% uh, level for two-tailed tests, right? And then uh, you, you're wondering, should I trust this number? You know, basically, the idea is that, can I say that the effect of education on wage is 2.3, whatever the unit is? You might want to scroll down and then to 
see, to, for example, what are these variables, what are these, uh, I don't know, performance matrices, and etc. And if you're curious to interpret things, you can go ahead and say, you know what, go ahead and interpret the coefficient of education for me. This coefficient was 2.3456, whatever. I, th I bet this is just, just a simple example, right? And then it's, it's going to explain it. It's going to say that the coefficient of education and the regression model represent the estimated change in the wage for one unit of change in the independent variable, holding everything else constant. So if you know the theory deep down, this is almost correct, right? Because it's just missing the term on average. So it means that on average, the wage is going to increase by 2.345 if holding everything else constant, right? So again, it's a good combination between your domain knowledge and then to ChatGPT helping you out. But either way, it's going to help you a ton and make you a lot more productive compared to you wanting to go through all these things from scratch. And I highly encourage everybody to use ChatGPT Cloud to these large language models, especially when it comes to coding in Python, especially when you're working with very well documented packages like this. So, yeah. And then uh, let's see. So, for example, it says that the interpretation holds as long as the assumptions of the linear regression models are met, right? So we know that what are those assumptions? You know, down the road, you can say, okay, what are those assumptions? Help me understand them. What if one of them is violated? Now that you know the theory part, you can communicate with this chat GPT type of things a lot better and you can demystify everything you see here. So, for example, you have no idea what is this uh, Durbin Watson uh, statistics telling you and you can go ahead and say, OK, tell me what is Durbin Watson. Tell me what is uh, probability of JV. Tell me what is uh, omnibus. So these are has something to do with the normality of your residuals and things like that. So hopefully this was um, helpful. And again, I want you to remember it's always a combination of what you already know from the theory and what you can do with ChatGPT. For all the lectures going forward, we can just use one prompt, one simple prompt. For example, down the road, we're doing random forest. Say, give me a simple example of random forest uh, and then using scikit-learn package. And it's gonna generate the entire output for you in just by just one prompt. So going forward, the point is not uh, making you an expert in terms of writing these codes from scratch. The point is to make sure that you have the theory, you have the fundamental understanding of these models under the hood, and then you can communicate better with tools like ChatGPT to make you a super efficient kind of person or analyst. All right, now with that, let's go back to our uh, Python notebook and then literally fly through all these outputs, right? So it is connected, let's run this. And remember guys, I already uploaded the, the pickle file. So if I go ahead and import the pickle file, it's not gonna complain. So let's look at ahead of it again, wage hours, IQ, education, experience, tenure, age, married, black, and modern education. So this is what we cleared last time. If you remember in the EDA, we replaced the missing values in modern education with the median modern education or the mean, uh, yeah, I think something like that. Uh, but to get the idea. And uh, if I look at the info, because this was a pickle file, we already figure out what should be the type of each variable. So for example, married and black are category and everything else. We decided to treat them as a float. And we can look at the description and uh, we can look at the histogram plot. plot. I absolutely want you, whenever you're doing regression analysis, I absolutely want you to look at the plot of the target variable or the explain, uh, explained variable. Because uh, if this shape is skewed to the left or right, it's, it, it will cause some issue when it comes to you know, the homoscedasticity assumptions or normality of residuals or things like that. So the assumptions of the uh, basically classical linear model assumptions are going to be violated. And we know the consequences of any of those violations, right? So if this doesn't ring a bell, make sure you watch the theory lecture that we discuss all these things in very details. So here, for example, I ask, what do you learn by comparing the mean and median? So obviously mean is gonna be higher, median is lower, so this is right skewed. So what are the implications? What assumption is violated, right? I want you to think about these questions deep down. Then we can, so one solution to this, usually we do a transformation to the target variable. So for example, I can do log transformation and log transformation is gonna change the distribution from maybe more skewed, skewed to something less skewed, right? So this is a log version. So again, Guys, I'm not gonna sh 
tell you how to make a variable into a log because just read the code for yourself. If you don't understand it, copy the entire thing, paste it to chat GPT, say, explain it step by step. And actually this is exactly what I want you to do. So for example, in this plot, I think we talked about this rock thing last time, but if it doesn't, if you don't remember, go ahead and just put this thing and paste it in the chat GPT and say, what, what is this rock doing? And ask for an explanation. Yeah, and we can look at the pair plot. So this is a pair plot uh, between our y variable and the, very, the interesting exponential variables, right? So for example, I wanna see what is the relationship between log wage and hours, IQ, education, experience, tenure, age, and modern education. And obviously with education is upward sloping, modern education upward sloping, all of them is almost upward sloping, which is this, and for hours it's kind of weird. You know, it seems that the more hours you put into work, the wage is going to be lower, something like, or at least there's no relationship. So this, this is, I'm curious to see if this correlation is statistically significant or not, right? Yes, the correlation is there, for example, for IQ, for education, but is it statistically significant? In order to answer that question, we have to, under the hood, we have to remember that, okay, are these assumptions violated or not? If yes, the answer is no, we cannot say anything about this story. All right, and this is exactly what we did in using ChatGPT, right? So we say from SMF, remember this is a formula API and for the OLS, and then this is our formula, log wage on IQ plus education. Yeah, if you run the model, we look at the summary. This is a summary. R score 13, adjusted R score 12.8. Well, nothing fancy here. We should be able to do better. And uh, we are not controlling for anything yet, right? So we have very good variables here and we're only controlling for IQ and education. If anything, assumption number four is gonna be violated here, in my opinion, because the fact that these error terms, that we're gonna put everything in the error terms not correlated with education and IQ is highly questionable. So I need to control for more variables to make sure that that assumption is more likely uh, not to be violated, right? Yeah, and when it comes to coefficients, for example, the education, remember, this is a log level model, so this is log, level. So it means that one unit increase in education is going to change the wage by some percentage, right? So we interpret it like this. So one year increase in education, holding in everything else constant, is going to increase the wage by this number multiplied by 100. So 3.9%. Uh, yeah, this is, a, this is the beauty of the log level models, right? This It helps you to interpret things easier, right? And now, is this a story valid? I have to look at the test statistic. Yeah, test statistic is great. P-value is almost zero. So great. So you, you might want to jump into conclusion and say that that's awesome. So it seems that I can extrapolate it to the population and say, it seems that if education increased by one unit in the population, the wage is going to increase by 3.9%. Is this true? I want you to pause for a second and think about it. Again, this is why we are, you are learning the theory part. Otherwise, doing this thing in Python, it's piece of cake, especially right now with ChatGPT and Claude 2 and things like that. So that's not, that's not the part that is gonna make you different from other people, right? So what makes you different, what makes you stand out is that you understand how to interpret these things. So then in order to answer that question, is it fake significancy? Because if I want to write it in a nice table, I'm going to see three stars on top of this. It says that it's significant at 1% level, right? But is it legit? Then you have to start asking those kind of questions. Okay, so is the model suffering from heteroscedasticity? If yes, I cannot trust this number. How do you do that? There are some tests for heteroscedasticity, again, which is beyond the scope of this course. But remember, econometric has answered all these questions, right? So we know that, for example, if you use, I don't know, those, those heteroscedasticity tests, if you reject the, the, the fact that the model is homoscedastic, then we cannot trust this number, or things like that, right? Then uh, we can go ahead and uh, I added some stuff here just for the sake of completeness. But if you're curious how to do it in Python, I would suggest try it out. So for example, add categorical variable, right? So imagine you don't know how to add a categorical variable to the model and then you're gonna just type it in here, you know, add, add a categorical variable. So how can I add a categorical variable? let's say female to the model, okay? And then it's gonna generate you some output, obviously. So 
yeah, female is it's just synthesizing this number, and it's and if you just look at that, it's going to add the female here, because in this in, in here the female is zero one and it's integer. It's okay, you know, the model is going to understand that we don't you specifically telling it that it's a categorical variable, but the way that we did things. Again, worst case thing is that you're going to copy this, paste it, it doesn't work, you're going to investigate what's going on, right? But the way that we did things here, we said that the married and black, they were category, they, they were, let's go back. Mm, yeah, where's the type? They were categories. So if I pass them simply to the model as ChatGPT suggests that, if I say just instead of this thing, I say black and then married, it's going gonna, it's gonna to complain, right? It's going to say that this is categorical variable. You have to specify that. So how do we specify to the, uh, to the, for, to the basically, this formula that we're talking about, that we're dealing with a categorical variable? You have to use this letter C. You know, C, open, close, parenthesis. I think it's capital C. We'll, we'll try it out. If you do that, so it's going to do the job. Let me actually remove one of them and see what is the error. So it's going to complain on me. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's actually remove both of them. So this is, yeah, so as you can see, yeah, we have, so it's, it's going to, yeah, black and married. So it knows, it's, it's going to generate something like this. It says that we are keeping the black one and getting rid of the other one to, to avoid the dummy verbal trap. But if you don't want to, let me, let me actually put back this C thing. So we want to specifically telling that, okay, I want this class. All right, so now, I didn't pay attention if the, if the numbers are different. And I think it used to be an issue, probably they fixed it. I'm, I'm not quite sure. If you know more, just let me know in the comments. Uh, yeah, but but anyways, um, if, if, if the categories are zero, one, you don't need to add anything. If, and it, apparently here, if you specify this category, we don't need to add anything either. So it's going to work without the C things. But these are the little things that you can easily figure it out when you're having this conversation with ChatGPT and trying an error. And I absolutely want you to do that. So when we add these categorical variables to the model, we go from 13% to 19% instead of adjusted R score. So we're in the right track. So I'll, for, for now, I take regression two over regression one for sure. It's an improvement. And then, for example, look what happened to the significance. Everything is still super significant, right? Look at the t-stat. Look at the p-value is almost all zero. But again, can I trust these numbers? That's a bigger question. We have to make sure that none of the assumptions are violated, okay? And yeah, then we are interested to incorporate some nonlinearities, right? So what is the motivation? We are going to plot, for example, wage versus education using its Seaborn LM plot function or method. It's going to basically fit a linear regression and then tell you how it looks like. And then imagine you want to say that for higher level of education, is, do I see any kind of nonlinearity here, right? You might want to say, yes, let's give it a try. So how do we do that? So we're going to add that education to the power of two to the model. Again, ChatGPT already told us how to do that, but we can, we can look back. Yeah, if you want to do a squared version of something, you have to do I, open, close, parenthesis, and then a, H to the power of 2, right? Uh, yeah, so this is, you're adding education squared to the model, keeping everything else there. So this is my regression number 3. We go from 18.8-ish adjusted R score to 18.3. So I actually decrease. So if anything, in terms of predictability, it's, it's a worse model. And let's look at the interpretability part. So let's see what will happen to the T-stats. So the education used to be a super important or at least significant coefficient here, which was, you know, is this a log model? Yeah, so this is a log model. So it used to be 4%, 4.10%, but now, and it was significant with p-value zero, but now education and its squared version, none of them are significant. So I would not add something like this to the model. So this is suggesting that Maybe there's no kind of nonlinearity here. Let's let's leave it on with a simple linear relationship between education and wage. I hope you're getting the idea. So how we can read through these tables, how we can play around. And by the way, this thing that we're doing, going from regression one to two to three, and then down the road to four, this is called feature engineering, right? This is more of an art than uh, basically science. 
And uh, yeah, depending on what hypothesis you have in mind, what do you want to ask, Econometric is so beautiful, it's going to enable you to answer all those questions. And imagine we want to do interaction terms. Now. You want to see what is the effect of uh, education on wage, but for different classes, for black versus non-black. So that's where the motivation is coming from. And it seems, actually, it seems that on the, in this graph, it seems that for non-blacks, the as you see, for higher level of education, the wage is going to be higher, right, compared to the black ones. Uh, so this is, this is probably, again, this is, is this a wage discrimination? So I need to see that if this coefficient for the interaction over the black is it statistically significant or not, right? Then if you're interested to in investigate something like that, you can go ahead and add that interaction term. Again, you know, we, we know how to do it using uh, from, from chat GPT and or we can play around with these things. So for example, what I have is, you know, I'm adding the interaction term using the I function. Again, there are a couple of ways to do that. Using the I function and I say education multiply the black thing. And because black was category, if I, I have to re return it into a NumPy array to a bunch of zero ones, right? And then, so education multiply black is gonna be the interaction term. And uh, this is my regression number four. Here, if I go ahead and remove this NumPy argument, it's gonna say that, hey, you remember the black was a category variable and you cannot do that, right? So object with the type of category cannot perform the NumPy uh, multiplication. So we have to make sure that this is a NumPy array version of the categorical variable black. Now it's, it's going to be a bunch of zero ones. I'm going to multiply that bunch of zero ones to education levels, put it in the I function. And then this is how we can write it in the stats uh, model formula API, right? Then, yeah, this is our regression number four. The adjusted R score is decreasing. So if anything, we're making it worse. And the interaction itself is not significant. The p-value, it's barely significant at 11.69-ish percent, but this is a high p-value. So at 5%, 10%, 1% is absolutely not significant. So we're gonna say that, you know what, maybe we don't, we don't need it. We didn't need to add the interaction term. I know this is too much, too fast, but I assume that you have already some econometric background and this is a machine learning course, so we're reviewing those things very quickly. And when it comes to machine learning approach of, of the linear regression, we don't bother. We don't bother to look at these things like this. So for example, we are gonna use neural networks to figure out any complex pattern in the data and we cannot care, le we cannot care less about the interpretability part we will, focus, we will be focusing on you know, things like adjusted R score or mean squared error in that sense for, for machine learning. All right, so, and so it seems that, again, I told you this whole process is called feature engineering and it seems that uh, between the regressions, regression two and three were the better ones. So we're gonna stick, for the rest of this uh, for, uh, the notebook, I'm gonna stick to the regression number three. So let me remind you what was regression number three. This was when we regress wage and IQ, education, age, education scored, uh, having black and married in the model, right? We can, we can focus on the regression number two as well. But just again, for the sake of argument, I'm going to stick to regression number three. Go ahead and try regression number two and see if you can get a better predictions. All right. Now we have a story. You know, we told the story, we interpreted the these coefficients, but be very, very careful. We are doing econometric to make sure that our story is legit, right? The interpretability part. We didn't answer that question yet. Actually, we didn't, we didn't say anything. We didn't test for heteroskinasticity. We didn't test for endogeneity. We didn't run any kind of those uh, uh, diagnostic tests. In practice, if you want to write a piece of a research article or I don't know for policy implications you want to make sure that your econometric model is legit you have to go ahead and check the validity of all those assumptions otherwise it's just a number it's just a number that you, you don't know if you can trust this number or not okay okay so now let's look at some evaluation performance matrices and for that we can go ahead and import from statsmodel.tools we're going to import evaluation measures and I think here's the list. Let me actually show you a list here. So here's a list of all those tools. So uh, let's see. 
yeah, we have we have a bunch of them here, right? So for example, we have mean absolute error, we have median absolute error, we have mean squared error, root mean squared error, root mean squared percentage error, and you name it. You can go ahead and click on any of these things and look at the source code and see how it's done, read through the uh, documentation. But again, because this is a stats model Python package, it is well documented on the internet. And uh, you, if you ask the same things from ChatGPT, 99.9% .9 is going to give you a correct answer. So I'll, I'll encourage you to try it out. Okay. So now let's, this was a kinematic part. Now we, well, we use a kinematic for interpretability. Now let's use a kinematic for the prediction part, right? Because remember, with a kinematic model, we can make some predictions. Why not? Because we have the coefficients now, we have the values for x variables, we can plug the numbers and then come up with some predictions. That's simple. So the predictions, I'm going to say from regression three, you remember we saved the model in this regression three, we saved the fitted model in regression three. We say, give me the predictions. So these are your y hats, right? So basically these are y hats. So prediction, I'm, I'm showing you the prediction for the first observation to the 10th one. And so these are the predictions. And I can show you alongside the actual numbers. So what are the actuals? In your data frame, give me the column, give me the yeah, column wage for the first 10 observations, right? So y is 76,900. Y hat, the prediction is 85,190. So the model is over predicting. When the model is over predicting, you expect the residual to be positive or negative? Negative, right? Because the residual is y minus y hat. So basically, if I do 76,900 minus 85,190, this is my residual, right? So I'm going to have 10 of these residuals. And obviously, for the entire data set, which whatever the size of the data set was, well, actually, let's see. DF. Oops, sorry. This, yeah, this, is, this is Python. Uh, we can do shape. Yeah, so we have 935 observations, right? So we are going to get 935 of these residuals, right? Now I can play around, I can report a bunch of performance matrices, right? Let's do mean absolute error. So what is mean absolute error? So we're going to look at the errors, take the absolute values and take the average. So mean absolute error simply from this eval measures, remember, uh, this is a module from this, we're going to call the attribute or function or method mean absolute error so this is a function what is it go to the documentation and see for example this is mean squared error you can look for mean absolute error or again you know go to chat gpt how can i report the mean absolute error using using stats model api or stats model package right again this is going to give you an most probably correct answer. So it is doing it manually though. So it says that these are the predictions, right? The way that we did it. And then absolute errors, it's, it's calculating it manually. Y minus Y hat, absolute value. And then I need to take the average of those absolute value. And I would say, okay, this is great. Okay, this is great. Is there a build in function in stats model? And then uh, we will see. Well, we already know the answer, but we will see what ChatGPT is going to tell us. Well, as of last no, stats model did not have a built-in. Anyway, so this is because it was trained into September 2021. You can do CLOT2. Probably it's going to give you that the eval matrices. Eval, what was it? Eval. Yeah, eval measures, right? Or you can do Google BARD, which is excellent. You know, well, at least it's going to be real time in terms of these sort of things, right? But now you know different way of constructing it. Actually, this is this is better because I can I know exactly what's going on and I can trust this number better than any kind of built-in functions, right? Because this is very simple. Y minus Y hat, absolute average. That's it. This is my mean absolute error. How to interpret that? What is a unit? You know, it's again, you can ask ChatGPT, but the unit is gonna be the same as the units of your target variable, whatever the unit of target variable is. That's the same as here. Because again, remember, you're doing y minus y hat. So if y is in dollar, y hat is in dollar. So the difference is in dollar. Take the average, take the summation, nothing changes to the unit. To, to, to the unit is going to be in terms of dollars. So mean absolute error is going to be $27,379.
then you can report median absolute error. So basically you can either use this median absolute error function or you can construct it manually. What is mean squared error? Again, you can use MSE or again, you have to say Y, Y hats. Let's look at the MSE. We already looking at the MSE, right? Yeah, this is the MSE thing. You can look at the source code always, of course, and see exactly what's going on, right? So basically, this is a source code of the stats model package for the MSE. And what we're doing is that, you know, take the, you know, this is a difference, actuals versus predictions to the power of two. So this is error to the power of two. And then you're taking the average. Yeah, mean squared error. That's simple, right? Um, yeah. And again, here's a root mean, root mean squared error. Obviously, we're going to take a square root of that. Okay, so what is the unit of mean squared error? Remember, it is y minus y hat to the power of 2. So if it is dollar, it's going to be dollar to the power of 2. That's why you're going to get it this crazy large number. Uh, yeah, we use regression 3 because we wanted the unit to be dollars, I guess. Now I remember why we did regression 3. Let, let me look at regression 3. Yeah, we are regressing wage, not log wage. So that's why you know, I just wanted to give you an you know, example why what these units might might be, right? So again, this is crazy large number because this is dollar to the power of two. Does that make sense? No, nope. we're going to take the square root and call it root mean squared error. Now this makes sense. This is $36,400. Is this a large number? Is this a small number? I don't know. We can report the percentage wise, right? So root mean squared percentage error. So again, we can use the function root mean squared percentage error and then look at the output. But the output, the out, yeah, the outcome is going to be 5.4, which is basically telling you that 541%. So based on the R score that I had, 20%, I, this was the first time that I was trying this using the RMSPE function from the stats model. I was kind of surprised. Say, there's no way we can get this large number of um, for percentage error 50, 541 should be off and it seems that that was the case and I dig deeper and surprisingly you know correct me if I'm wrong you know just uh, I, I, I look at the source code and it seems that it's making a mistake so I, I decided to do it manually so again this is the part that your domain knowledge is going to help and, and you, you have to say okay does this number make sense or not and I would say, let's do it manually. Let's do actuals minus predictions divided by actuals. This is percentage error. I'm going to score it, square percentage error. I'm going to take the average, and then I'm going to take the square root. So this is uh, basically root mean squared percentage error. Root mean squared percentage error, right? If you do it manually, we get this number, 0.54. So if I multiply it by 100, I get 54%. This seems correct to me. So I think this is 54% is correct, but when, I, when we use this some built-in function from stats model API, it got us, we, we are off by the multiplication of 10. And I was wondering what's going on. So that's why I put, the, put their source, source code here for you to investigate as well. So click on this link, and then it's gonna send you to the source code for uh, root mean squared percentage error, if you scroll down and you will realize that yes, they're off by a factor of 10 because they are doing mean squared percentage error. So, so far everything is working just fine here. You know, you have the error, you're scoring the error and etc. Mean squared percentage error is also fine, but we are multiplying it by 100 and then taking the square root of that at the next level. So basically it's, you're multiplying everything by the factor of 10. So this step is wrong, right? So yeah, that's, that's why sometimes if you do things from scratch, again, this is the way that ChatGPT told us, uh, maybe, maybe it's better. Let's actually give it a try. Now help me to calculate the mean absolute percentage error. Mean squared percentage error? Yeah, I think mean squared percentage error. Let's actually, mean squared percentage error. And then let's see how it does it. Obviously, it's going to do it manually, right? Uh, so, yeah, it's going to do the job. The percentage error is y minus y hat divided by y, right? So this is our percentage error. So it's going to multiply by 100 there. And then it's going to square it. 
So that this is a right way, right? So it's gonna multiply by hundred squared and take the square root. So in the documentation, it, they were doing they were doing a multi multiplication by hundred here, uh, which again is gonna make things off. Yeah, this should work. You can go ahead and copy these things and paste it and give it a try and see if you can get the same answer. Uh, all right, yeah. So that was that was it, and uh, basically in terms of performance metrics. There, so the second approach of doing these things on using stats model API is not use the formula version. Use the, the basically the other, we call, that, the formula version we call, we import it as SMF. So the simple stats model API, we're gonna use it as, we're gonna import it as SM. So here is the documentation for that. So this is a classical stats model kind of regression analysis that we can do in Python. And the way to do that, you know, simply you have to prepare the data set first. And then you're going to run, well, actually, let me show it to you how to do that. You're going to run the regression on the entire data set, right? So for example, we're going to say, let me remind you what is a data frame. So we have wage, hours, IQ, education, and et cetera, et cetera, right? And we are going to use, this is regression five. Let's use a formula version. So I'm gonna call it regression five formula version. And we are regressing wage on hours, IQ, education, experience, tenure, age, married, black, and modern education, literally everything, right? Remember, this is, this is a log range that we manually created. We can go ahead and get rid of it. So if we do that, look at the summary output. This is the summary output, you know, R score of 20%, and everything is almost significant except the hours and, yeah, tenure is significant at 5%. Yeah, everything else is significant. Yeah, this, this is a relatively decent model. When we, when we incorporate, basically, we control for all the variables, right? All the exponential variables. That's not the point. The point is that how can we do it using the stats model API, not the formula version? For that, again, as I said, you have to prepare the data set first, right? So first things first, we're gonna construct our features or explanatory variables. I'm gonna drop the wage and log wage. Why? Because, because that's, those are the target variables, if anything. So either I'm gonna use wage or log wage. In this case, I'm gonna just keep these things, I call it X, right? And then, you know, we have to add a constant vector manually. So that's why we're gonna say from SM, this is method add constant to this data frame X, and now show me the head of X, right? This constant is there to, because again, uh, this, is, this is, has something to do with the matrix algebra version of calculating the coefficients for us, right? So we need this constant vector to be there to calculate the beta hat zero for us, uh, the intercept you know, or the constant term. Uh, so that's why we need to manually add it. Now I have X, so the next step is to simply go ahead and use from this SM. I'm not going to use a formula anymore, so I just simply say SM instead of SMF, and then OLS, that's the engine, and then Y and X. This X is expected to be something like this. If you wanna have an intercept in the model, you have to add this constant manually. If I do not add this constant, I'm not gonna get an intercept. So here, in order to make sure that we are comparing apples to apples, here we did have intercept. I wanna have that intercept in this SM version. So I did it. So I added to the X manually. And if you look at the output, this output must be exactly the same as what we have. Let's check one of them. So for example, education is 5152 and the T stats 7.075. So education 5152, 7.075, right? So we get the exact same answer. And then you might wonder, okay, so which one is better? The, if you want to dig the basically deep dive into the feature engineering thing and the interpretability, playing around with these variables. Of course, the formula version is a lot more flexible. The stats model API originally came as this version, but people in the community, they were using R. Again, lots of statistician and econometricians still as if today are using R because it's it, it was designed for econometric models like or statistical analysis like this. And then later on, the stats model package, they decided to add this formula version, which is very close to, to our style. But again, in my opinion, if you want to dig a um, uh, deep dive into the regression analysis, use the formula version. If you want to regress basically naively your target variable on everything and you have hundreds of features, you don't need to write down those hundreds of features manually. You can just say, you know what? 
this is all the features go ahead and run the entire regression so that's why we have something like this but imagine only if you wanted to regress on uh, you wanted to do something simple like regressing wage and education age and age square so you had to manually add age square and remove everything else and then come up with this let's say education age age square and uh, just add the constant and then then run the regression hopefully you're following uh, but but again it's going to be a lot more uh, difficult compared to the using the simple formula version okay so for example, if you want to do something more complex like this, education, education squared, married, black, uh, married, multiplied, black, this is the interaction terms, and then log experience, obviously the formula version is going to be easier. Because again, if you want to do it with the non-formula version, you have to construct the your feature variables uh, in a data frame, add the constant, and then run regression. So this is regression 6, the formula version. And obviously, I'm not going to try it out without the formula version because, again, just it's, this is easier this way. So you can interpret these coefficients. Again, I'm, I'm going to keep this video short. And this is a machine learning course. We, if you're curious to understand, for example, deep down to how you can interpret the combination of these two things, you have to take the econometrics course. Uh, yeah, or just have it, you know, you know conversation with chat GPT and in order to understand and educate yourself a thing or two when it comes to regression analysis. All right. So yeah, and it seems that, well, uh, yeah, here, I think I am showing you the NumPy version sort of thing. So I'm going to say, so we want to replicate these things without the formula version. So what do I need to have? I need to have education, married, black, and experience. First things first. So let's have them. Education, experience, married, and black. So this is, and then I need to manually construct everything else, right? I need to construct education, education squared, so which is education to the power of two. I need to construct this interaction term, married multiplied black, and I'm going to call it married black. And I need to construct log experience. And at the end of the day, I need to add that constant, right? So as you can see, now this data frame is ready for me to be used. And obviously I need to remove the experience because we want to work with log experience. So that's why we do that. And then we are going to do the regression 6, the NumPy version. The output of this is going to be exactly the same as this, the formula version. Yeah, but which one was easier? One line of code, a lot of preparation, right? So you get the idea. If you want to do you know, heavy feature engineering, interpretation, storytelling sort of things, definitely go with the formula version. And that's essentially why Stats Model decided to develop that formula version later on. All right, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I really expect you to use ChatGPT, Cloud2, Google Bard, Microsoft Bing, you name it, and to make you a more efficient person when it comes to coding. Don't worry about the coding part. Uh, again, if it was a couple of years ago or, or even a year ago, I would say, yeah, if you want to sell yourself as a developer, well, at least as someone who knows how to apply these things in Python as well, focus on the Python part too. But now I'm less concerned about that because in the, maybe not, not in the near future, but in the longer term future, you'll get to a point that you have this conversation in plain English with, with, with large language models and it's going to do the code for you, you know, effortlessly. But you are going to be the winner if you know how to communicate with ChatGPT efficiently. And it happens only if you know the theory deep down. So that's what I want you to take away. Until the next one, take care.